Mike's Daily Podcast, episode 599. It's Tuesday, November 26, 2013, 5 p.m. Pacific Time, Internet Talk Radio for your imagination. Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. Today, Madam Rutabaga, Valentino Bison Bentley, plus the return of the segment News Random, where we look at some interesting political news that's going on in California. Mike's Daily Podcast. And it appears that I have have been trying to stay away from ya. Mike's Daily Podcast. Yes, I have gone and hidden underneath the earth in my own private lair, which isn't very fun to go to because I don't have a chair inside of it, so I'm standing the whole time just thinking there, ruminating over my aging. Yes, that took place last week. It wasn't very engaging. Birthdays. At this time of your age, suck. Mike's Daily Podcast. But what the bleep? Because I had a good time with some friends last week. Mike's. But no podcast. Daily. And now I'm back with a podcast. Podcast. I hope you like today's podcast. Yeah. Because it comes from my heart, which is deep inside my body. And yes, I have aged since we last spoke. I'm now 45. I'm in my mid 40s. It's fascinating to me. This is this is weird. I'm one of these people that's young at heart and mind. I'm still an infant in my brain. Then I look in the mirror and I go, "Oh my, you're looking more and more like Doctor Evil every day." Hmm. What I could do with one million dollars and a facelift? No, I'll never do a facelift. I promise you that. No face. Unless unless I get into a car accident and need it just so that I look somewhat normal again. But I won't do it for just randomness. Which leads me to today's interesting observation. And that is a a, a, uh, saying that goes like this. Cheapiness. Let's try that again. Cheapiness is next to chastity-ness. That even a word? In other words, a cheap man is a celibate man if he's a single man. And this is true because I have been speaking to my single friends, and it seems like the ones that spend a whole lot of money on the women, they end up becoming more and more like a Barney Stinson. And even Barney Stinson on the How I Met Your Mother is a rich guy. So there, that goes and proves my point. Darn television, proving my points yet again. Look who just walked in. Hello, Michael Masters. This is my dog. Topeka. And I love the Bonnie Stinson and the Neil Patrick Harris. Yes, it's a funny show. And it's on Netflix, the last season. So I'm not watching this season at all. I haven't been able to find it. Last I checked on Hulu and CBS.com, it wasn't up yet. Maybe they've changed that since then. This was a couple weeks ago. So I, I don't know what's going on this season, but watching last season... It's quite funny. I laugh quite a bit. Michael Masu, I love how they take forever to tell a story. Yeah, it's sort of like they can't get from point A to point B. They go point A to point Zeta 5000 back to C plus minus and then to D, possibly over to, you know, some page that's across the classroom and across the billboard to the next study room. What were we talking about? I don't know, but look who else walking. Hello, Dave, Mike. This is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know, Dad? Mike, we hear that you are pretty upset because you have aged to the age of 45 day. Yeah, well, it, what didn't help was I was celebrating on my birthday with a friend of mine, a guy who is younger than me. He's 30. And he's single. And he's got like a Match.com app on his phone. And... Uh, somewhere in the middle of the uh, dinner that we were having, he says to me, oh, too bad you're not 20 years younger because this girl that wants to date me has got a sister. And I was like, it's, I'm not 90 for crying out loud. Throw me a freaking bone. Oh, my God, I am turning into Dr. Evil. Michael Matthews, that sounds like it was a very fun birthday. <laughs> yes, it, it surely was. Something else I'd like to say that I observed this wasn't on my birthday, but maybe a day or, or an hour or so ago. Uh, Avril Lavigne. Okay. 
If you watch Avril Lavigne music videos, which if you do that, you might be a pathetic person like me. But I was watching some Avril Lavigne videos because I was, I work at a radio station part time. And this radio station is what they call a hot adult contemporary. And they play, the only Avril Lavigne song they play is, say it with me, Complicated. Why you have to go and be so complicated, which is sort of like a poppy uh, version of a, it kind of, Avril always reminded me a little of Alanis Morissette. Their names are kind of similar. They're both from Canada. They, but Av- uh, Alanis embraced more of rock in the beginning. Avril Lavigne has always said, had this sort of pop sassy side. And she tries to be sexy, but it's weird because she's not. And her music videos, so she's had a bunch of songs. She's released a bunch of singles. And I was looking at some of them. And I'm thinking, you know, this is what Miley Cyrus wants to be. And actually, Miley's doing a better job of it than Avril. If I were Canadian, I might disagree with that statement that I just said. And then there's a music video that she's with her new honey, Chad Kroger, and they're singing together. And that's enough to make your brain bleed. Michael Masio, I bet you this is all beautiful. It, it's, so what it is, is it's a commercial for some Samsung or Sony or somebody. And she's, you know, showing off some tablet it figures into the music video where it doesn't figure at all into the music video. She's trying to push it in where it won't work, a square peg in a round hole. It's not working. Then in another music video, she was on some cell phone and she actually like named the product. I'm listening to my new Samsung phone and I can talk to my friends on it. We get it. You don't like Avril Lavigne, D. She wears too much makeup. Do you know that? Well, today's show has to do with politics. Which, it's obvious, isn't it? And apparently, according to eOnline.com, Laura Logan and producer Max McClellan have been ordered to take a leave of absence from the network, CBS, after the 60 Minutes report about the deadly 2012 attack on the U.S. Embassy in Benghazi, Libya, was found to be deficient in several respects following an investigation by CBS News. After initially defending the report... Eyewitness News Eye Candy Laura Logan, or would that be Laura Croft Logan? A ri- She's pretty. A veteran broadcaster and foreign correspondent issued an apology on the air. On November 8th, the original report, which revolved around a since discredited ex security officer's supposed eyewitness account of the attack, that aired uh, almost a month ago now. There is a lot to learn from this mistake for the entire organization said the executive producer of 60 Minutes and the CBS News chairman, Jeff Fager. We have rebuilt CBS News in a way that has dramatically improved our reporting abilities. Ironically, 60 Minutes, which has been a model for those changes, fell short by broadcasting a now discredited account of an important story and did not take full advantage of the reporting abilities of CBS News that might have prevented it from happening. You may remember several years ago, Dan Rather got in a hot water because of the news report they did on 60 Minutes about George W. Bush's stint in the military. And it ended being the end of longtime CBS Evening News anchor Dan Rather's career with the network because the story was based on falsified documents. Oh, and this also came up. The CBS Review found that Logan's reporting may have been clouded by previous statements she made about the Benghazi attack based on a speech she gave in October of last year before she even started work on the story. She made a speech in which she took a strong public position arguing that the U.S. government was misrepresenting the threat from al-Qaeda and urging uh, urging actions that the U.S. should take in response to the Benghazi attack. Laura Croft Logan doesn't know if she's going to be back on CBS or not, if she'll return or not. Mike, she is pretty hot there. Yeah, why don't we go see her? Okay, let's take the last place on Earth. You know, it can launch into the air, as it just did, and we're gonna land on Laura Croft's house. And, oh, here she is. Laura, sorry to crash into your house like that. This is a real bummer you leaving CBS News right now. Yes, Michael, well, I'm taking a little bit of time away 
from CBS so I can watch my favourite TV show, Doctor Who, which had its 50th anniversary over the weekend. Well, Mike, she's got a beautiful accent, too. Day. Yeah, we're absolutely transfixed. Do you know that? What do you think about her, madam? Eh. Okay. Guess she's not pleased with Laura. Laura, thank you for taking time. Good luck with you. And yes, the Doctor Who uh, 50th anniversary was fantastic on Saturday. Though I don't get cable, and that means that I don't even watch your CVS 60-minute show, I did get to see the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who on YouTube. Someone had posted it, but to avoid getting taken down, because YouTube is constantly searching out for copyright infringement, they took the show... They put it in a frame, they tilted the frame, and then they tinted it so that YouTube couldn't track it down. But I was able to watch it, a tinted, tilted Doctor Who 50th anniversary, and it was wonderful. Oh, what was that? Lord just threw a glass at your head, D. Oh, time for us to leave. Let's go launching and landing now. Oh, maybe I should ask Laura out on a date. I don't even know if she's married. Who cares? So what do you think about this whole Benghazi story, twisted, turned, flipped upside down, and causing yet another controversy with 60 Minutes? You can email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com or not. But email me if you would like to. We read your comments on the section emails from email. Also email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. Also, we have the website, mikesdailypodcast.com. Go there to find a link to where to listen to us in iTunes. Subscribe to the show in iTunes. And as soon as I post it, you can listen to it and get caught up in all the old shows that I've posted. And you can also rate and comment on the show, and it helps us out if you do that. We also have a link to where to find us on Facebook and our Facebook page. Like our Facebook page and share uh, the posts that we have of the show with your friends so that more people will find out about us. We're also on Twitter, Spreaker.com, SoundCloud, and we're on the, um, what's that called? Oh yeah, the Stitcher Radio app. And links to all of those, as well as where to find us on Yelp, to Yelp about the show, is all there at mikesdailypodcast.com. You can also help out the show by buying something through the Amazon deal of the day. We got a little portal to that. If you click on the window that we have on mikesdailypodcast.com and buy something through that, it helps support the show. We also got the blog and the daily podcast picture at mikesdailypodcast.com. News random. Here are some news stories that have to do with the state of politics here in the state of California. Some interesting little tidbits that you probably didn't know about. And we start off with plastic. And the fake plastic A one, two, three, four. Okay, I like it when that bass comes in. The plastic bag ban has been in effect for nearly a year in Pod Castro Valley and in Alameda County. Officials say it has been a success so far with fewer bags winding up in county landfills. While the policy may be good for the environment, it's bad for some stores. A Safeway employee complained that people bringing their own reusable bags has resulted in an increase of thefts. Some people come in the store and use the bags as shopping baskets, putting items in while they shop. Most people pay, but some just walk out with a full bag without paying, and the employees have a hard time keeping an eye out for it. The bag ban went into effect on January 1st of this year and is monitored by StopWaste.org, the county's waste management authority. Grocery, liquor, convenience, pet food, and other stores that sell packaged food in Alameda County require people to bring in their own bags or purchase a paper bag for 10 cents. The cost of the paper bags could go up to 25 cents in 2015 in order to encourage the use of canvas bags, or in my case, vinyl bags. I bought these Trader Joe vinyl bags back in, gosh, 2007. I still use them all the time. I just keep a bunch in the trunk. And that way, I always have one ready to use. 
as I've said before, it is so simple. I don't know why people have such a freaking problem with reusable bags. Maybe not riding on the metro, but on the BART, the Bay Area Rapid Transit that we have in the Bay Area. What did I just say? Bay Area? (laughs) See, I'm still not adjusted to being a Bay Area native because I can't say Bay Area. It took two months of tortured talks, two strikes, and the unfortunate deaths of two workers for BART workers and their employer to finally agree on a contract that got the trains running again. The saga left commuters fuming and both sides bruised. A state lawmaker is considering introducing a bill that would ban transit strikes, an idea seemingly an anathema to democratic controlled a democratic controlled leg- legislature in California that is friendly to unions, but perhaps it's a possibility because of the anger over the strike. The tentative contract agreement came together quickly just two days after two transit workers were killed by a train operated by a BART employee being trained. The accident made it more difficult for BART management to maintain a very hard line and not accept any kind of compromise. The unions did not want the strike to go on and did not see it as in their best interest, partly because the public seemed to be blaming the workers rather than the management for the disruption to their lives. The BART dispute has prompted two area Democrats to weigh in against transit strikes. State Senator Mark DeSaulnier of Concord said he was looking into legislation to prevent future strikes. And Orinda City Councilman Steve Glazer, a candidate for state assembly and a former advisor to Governor Jerry Brown, said transit strikes cripple our economy. I'm just a bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's a bills. long journey. To- Governor Jerry Brown has signed 805 bills to date this year. And vetoed just 96 Meaning material Wending its way out of the overwhelmingly Democratic legislature stands An 89% chance of approval Somehow I don't think That's what the Democrats are getting in our uh, Nation's capital However, legislative Democrats Say that Brown Does not enjoy a similarly High approval rating with them They are not allowed to do the more progressive things they'd like to do with a Democratic majority because Governor Jerry Brown always says no. Under cover of the recent Columbus Day holiday, for example, Governor Brown spiked 30 bills lingering from the previous month's uh, close of this legislative session in California. All these bills were progressive friendly and were opposed by law enforcement groups and ultimately the governor. Jerry Brown didn't get elected because he'd signed every bill reducing sentences for cocaine. The governor is expected to run again next year. His larger concern is not to look too liberal and keep the business community as a partner. Obviously, as a formula that's working for him, and it's annoying a lot of progressives in the California state capitol. Hello, it's an amazing book. Bonjour. Hola. Ni hao. Me llamo Elder White. Are these your kids? This book gives you the secret to eternal life. Sound good? Eternal life. Jesus Christ. Super fun. Hello. Ding dong. And if you let us in, we'll show you how it can be done. No, thank you. Sure. Oh, well. That's fine. Goodbye. Have fun in hell. Hey, now. You simply won't believe how much. The Book of Mormon. And this is interesting. In California, reports that the Mormon church had given up the fight over gay marriage were premature. Earlier this year, Mother Jones and MotherJones.com and other news outlets noted that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was making a concerted effort to mend its tortured relationship with gay members and their families and to stay out of divisive political fights over gay marriage. The church sat out virtually every state ballot measure on the issue in 2012, helping assure that marriage equality bills and, I guess, bliss was passed in Maine, Maryland, and Minnesota. Wow, all M's. And elsewhere, it launched a website called mormonsandgays.org to urge better treatment of the LGBT community. 
Mormons even marched in pride parades in Salt Lake City. Now that the 2012 election's over and Mitt Romney, the nation's most famous Mormon, is no longer running for president, it seems the church is back in the ring. The Hawaiian state legislature recently began a special session to consider a bill that would legalize gay marriage in the state. The church is actively working to kill that measure. One Sunday in September, local Mormon bishops read a letter from top Hawaii Mormon leadership instructing churchgoers to contact public officials about the same sex marriage bill. It was not in the same vein as the call to action the church issued during the fight over California's anti-gay marriage measure Proposition 8, when church leaders read letters directing members to do, quote, all you can to support the proposed constitutional amendment by donating of your means and time. The September Hawaii letter was far more subtle, even acknowledging that some Mormons might actually be in favor of the marriage bill. Nonetheless, it urged members to review the church's proclamation to the world, which is a 1995 speech given by church president Gordon Hinckley that spelled out the church's belief that marriage can only be between a man and a woman This latest letter also recommended members donate time and resource to groups working on the bill, though it didn't say on which side they should be working. Hmm. That is so obfuscating. I think uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone need to do another musical about that. Thank you also to sfweekly.com, the San Francisco Examiner.com, and to the Castro Valley Forum for those stories. As we go outside of the last place on earth where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast, somewhere in Pod Castro Valley, California. And here's today's podcast picture. The picture was taken. Oh my gosh, when was this taken? Like forever ago. Uh, more than a year ago. It was last year when my cousin Ann Katrine was visiting, and we took her to Carmel by the Sea and then drove over to Point Lobos and went on that wonderful hike there. You can't take dogs there. Cannot. So that's kind of a bummer. But it is a beautiful area. It's just miles and miles of wondrous coastline that looks kind of like what you're seeing behind me there in the picture. Check it out if you ever make it to Carmel and Carmel by the Sea over here in the uh, California coast, West Coast, and you'll enjoy it. It's a, and then Carmel by the Sea is really expensive and full of hoity-toity rich people. And Yeah, it's just, you can only take so much of it. I haven't been there in over a year, and I'm fine for waiting another year because it's just that hoity-toity. But you can see that picture there at mikesdailypodcast.com. Michael Master, I love the car map by ZZ. Aren't they very pet friendly there? Yeah, supposedly Doris Day lives there, and I think she has like a hotel that's pet friendly. I read that somewhere, but I didn't include that in News Random today because we had four stories. That was enough. Yeah, so she and, and other fine people live there, but then there's some the hoity toities as well. Oh, and all the restaurants are too expensive to even eat at, to even look at. And that's my opinion of Carmel by the Sea. I love it, yeah. Then go, then go. Okay, bye. As she walks off, let me just let you know that tomorrow will be the 600th episode of Mike's Daily Podcast. Can you believe it? I can't. I'm not believing what I'm saying right now, but it's true. So tomorrow we will have a very special Mike's Daily Podcast. We'll have some guests that we've had on throughout the year on the show celebrating. We'll have all the characters here celebrating. It will be fun. I hope you'll get to be there. Make sure to tune in tomorrow. Oh, and we're also going to have Fabagoo Things to Do with Steve Hansen of Fabagoo.com. He'll let you know of all the fun things going on this weekend. And we will definitely for sure hear from Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, and John Deere the Engineer. You have aged to the age of 45 Day. Thank you, yeah. So that's where my life is at now, 45. What's it like, day? Aren't you 45? No comment. I thought you were... I don't know what age you are. I don't know what I just know Madame Rutabaga is like immortal. Yes, Michael Master, immortal! She's walking over some... Where was she going? To Camel. Oh, yeah. You know, so the... 
fact of the matter is that when you're in your 40s and your mid 40s, you've lived enough of your life where you start looking at all the young people and you go, holy sh**, these people are stupid. But then you're in awe because you go, oh my gosh, these people are actually quite smarter than I was at that age. And even though these young people look at you with a mystified look in, on their faces when you talk about a time when there was no MTV and there was, well, now there is no MTV either. But at a time where there's no cell phones and when computers were these big blocky things that did absolutely nothing and all those times of fun and mirth and how they're different now and they look at you like that and you can remember those times and it's kind of neat that you can think back to a time that was so different and, and, and was the groundwork for how things are today. You were a part of that. You can think back to those days and yet you go, hmm... I'm both happy, I know that, but also jealous. Jealous of these young people today. They've got all these things that I wish I had when I was younger. But now you're old and you appreciate these gadgets that the young people today just take for granted. You're kind of like, wow, this cell phone I have in front of me, I can can surf the web. I can find any answer. I used to walk around trying to find a stupid map. Now it's right there in my phone. Forever and always wonderful. Yeah, but you're still old. D. Don't you need to go and surf Match.com or something? No, all the women I meet there remind me of Bison Bentley with a wig on. They do? I didn't know that. Yeah, we're all creeped out now because of it. Thanks. Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at Mike'sTVPodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.